Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you a video today to talk about what you should know when it comes to boot contracts and professional players. There are a lot of misconceptions out there on how professional players choose which shoes that they actually wear and that's what I want to clarify in today's video. Now keep in mind that everything that I say in today's video is very general. It applies to most professional players but of course there are going to be exceptions to some of the things that I say. I'm well aware of those exceptions but like I said generally speaking when you're talking about a professional player playing in a big league for a big club most of these things that I'm about to tell you apply to them. So with that being said let's get right into the video. The first thing that you need to know is that most professional players especially the big name players are under contract and are being paid to wear a certain brand of soccer cleat. And I say brand just to stay very general, but we'll get more specific in just a second. So what you really need to take away from this is that, like I said, most players are being paid to wear a certain type or a certain brand of shoe. If you see the same player wearing the same brand, perhaps even the same model year after year, it's very, very likely that that brand has in fact paid him to wear their brand of shoe. So again, know that Nike and Ronaldo are partners because Nike pays Ronaldo. Messi wears Adidas shoes because Adidas pays Messi. A great example would be something I mentioned in the Evil Power One technology video, which is really where all the interest for this video is actually drummed up, is uh, Balotelli switching from Nike to Puma. His contract with Nike had expired. He had been wearing Nike cleats for the last couple of years. Puma came around, offered him more money, as well as perhaps a more powerful position in the brand as far as being a poster boy for the company, whereas with Nike, he was a, uh, a big part of their marketing, but a much smaller part in comparison to his role at Puma right now. Um, but like I said, he obviously signed with Puma, accepted more money, obviously, and he's now a poster boy for the brand. Not a bad deal for him, not a bad deal for Puma, but just realize that the switch from Nike to Puma isn't necessarily something that's voluntary. It's not a matter of, I don't like Nike shoes anymore, I'm gonna wear Puma because they have a better product. It's simply because Puma is going to pay me more money, so I'm going to wear their product. Again, just something that needs to be 100% clear here. Most professional players are not picking a specific brand based on the performance qualities of the product, but more so, depending on the brand that wants to pay them the most amount of money. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's great for the professional players and it's great for the companies. Obviously with boot enthusiasts, you not only want to know who's wearing the shoe, you also want to know how the shoe actually performs itself. And that's why a lot of you guys come to my YouTube channel as well as my website to actually see these in-depth reviews. But for most people, they don't necessarily care all that much. They see Ronaldo wearing the Mercurial Vapor, they go to the store and they know that's the Ronaldo shoe. They see Messi wearing the F50 Adi Zero, they go to the store and they know that is the Messi shoe and they buy it simply going off of the basis that their favorite player that they watch on TV is wearing that brand of shoe. And that's why the boot contracts and the overall marketing and advertising of paying all these players to wear their products is so important to each individual company. Now, like I mentioned earlier, most professional players are being paid to wear a certain brand of soccer cleat. And the reason why I bring this up again is because I think a lot of people think that the players are restricted and more or less being forced to wear a certain type of shoe that they may or may not actually like. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this rule. The big name players, again, Ronaldo's a great example. He is being paid specifically to advertise and wear the Mercurial Vapor 9, Messi the F50 Adi Zero, Balotelli the Evo Power 1, Iniesta the CTR 360, and the list of big names goes on and on. Obviously, they want the most high profile players advertising specific models in hopes of driving sales. But for the more general professional players, not every single player is making the news, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't making money from boot contracts. Those less, those more low profile players, let's call them, um, they're still getting paid the money, but aren't necessarily restricted to one specific model. So for example, if it, I was under contract with Adidas, but wasn't necessarily a big name, I would imagine that you have the option to choose between any of their models within their current lineup. So I could wear the F50 Adi Zero, the Nitro Charge, the 11 Pro, 
or the Predator, depending on what my preference was. You're still locked in within that brand, which may be viewed as restrictive, but you're getting paid money, you're picking the shoe on your own at the end of the day, and for the most part, you're still probably going to find something that you like within each individual brand. They all have a pretty good variety and a decent amount to offer. Now, with that being said, this brings me to my last point in that what you see the professional players wearing is not necessarily what you buy off the shelf. The last aspect of what professional players are wearing on their feet that a lot of people don't take into consideration is that looks can be deceiving. Just because you see something that looks like an F50 Addy Zero, it isn't necessarily the same F50 Addy Zero that you're going to be buying in the store that you have access to, period. I think a great example of this would be Leo Messi himself. It's pretty widely known that he prefers the leather version of the F50 Addy Zero. But what's kind of interesting is that every messy signature colorway that has been released in the F50 Addy Zero, if you're looking at older models and even the most current one, um, they've only been available to the public in synthetic upper variations. So right off the bat, he has a customized version of his own colorway, and rightfully so. But you also have to take into consideration that if you look more closely at the shoe itself, it's in a layout, as far as the leather itself goes, that has never been available on any of the Addy Zeros, period, let alone that particular colorway. So again, he's got a pretty heavily customized version of the leather Addy Zero right off the bat. And you also have to take into consideration that, yes, it's leather, it's definitely something that you you can tell but you don't know what kind of leather it is and I would uh, put a lot of money uh, as far as betting that the leather on his shoe is nicer than the leather on the leather Addy Zeros that you can buy in the store. Not to confuse anybody but again just keep in mind that the, the Addy Zeros that Messi is wearing, one of the most popular shoes currently on the market, is nowhere near the Addy Zero that you're actually buying in the store. And that's not to say that the ones you buy in the store are bad, they're just not the same as what the pros are wearing. Um, another great example would be Robin Van Persie and the Addy Zeros that he's currently wearing. If, if any of you guys have seen pictures, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have, um, it's basically something that looks, I guess, a little bit like an F50 Addy Zero. But if you look at the bottom, it's very clearly an Adidas Predator Addy Power, which is kind of cool. It's a shoe that hasn't been around for a little while now, but obviously his strong preference is for that sole plate. And who knows what the rest of the upper is. If it's got an Addy Power bottom, it's very unlikely that the top half of the shoe is an actual F50 Addy Zero. There's probably some heavy customization going on there. Another great example would be Danny Alves. I'm not sure if he's still doing this, but he was supposed to be one of the main poster boys for the Nitro Charge 1.0 when it released a few months ago. Prior to that, he was wearing the F50 Addy Zeros, and there were some leaked images of the Nitro Charges that he was wearing in game that were essentially a synthetic pair of F50 Addy Zeros with Nitro Charge graphics on top. It was very clear. Um, there was no hiding that they were not at all a pair of Nitro Charges, but they were made to look like a pair. So again, great example of a great player wearing a great pair of shoes that weren't necessarily what he was advertising. Uh, the last example that I'll give, and there's so many out there, leave a comment down below, I'm sure you guys have lots and lots of examples, is the Nike stud patterns. A lot of the professional Nike players um, are not necessarily wearing the stock stud patterns on their shoes. I've seen lots of legend stud patterns on CTR360 Maestri 3s. I've also seen older uh, stud patterns of the Mercurial Vapors on something like the Mercurial Vapor 9. Not all the professional players wear the firm ground stutter stud pattern with the two studs in the heel. They wear the older variation with the four studs in the heel. So again, kind of a cool little customization that you just do not have access to um, at a public level. So again, while these players are locked in by contract to wear a certain brand of shoe, the shoe that they're actually wearing, while it might look like something you can buy on the shelf, doesn't necessarily mean that it is. All right, guys, that's all I have to say as far as boot contracts go. Obviously, there's a lot that I didn't cover in this video, and really, you could go on forever on this particular topic. There are so many variables and different situations, and I guess if you have your own examples, leave them down below in the comments. But other than that, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to support it with a like. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment down below. I definitely will get an answer out to you. And also, if you have any suggestions for other kind of discussion topic videos like today's, be sure to leave a comment down below. I'm always open to hearing your suggestions questions and really want to make content that you guys would be interested in seeing. That's the main reason why this video was made in the first place. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information down below in the description as well. And other than that guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and as always, thanks for watching.